Welcome to the EchoCast, episode 52, one year down, hopefully at least another one to go. It's one year. That's a lot. Please forgive any audio issues you may be getting. I had to completely redo them before the show because I'm an idiot and I deleted my sound source. So, might be better, might be worse. Let me know in the comments. Today on episode 52, uh, I'll be announcing a giveaway at the end with links everywhere and such. I'll do a state of the game recap, uh, news and listener questions, as well as uh, do a little talking about the difference between balancing a game and fixing bugs and exploits in a game. So let's jump right into the state of the game recap. This week we had Hamish and Yannick talking about the release and current status and things that are going on. A lot of the talk was about major bugs that have been fixed completely, or at least partially. The skill bug has mostly been fixed, but there's still some interactions between some of the things, uh, some of the talents and stuff like that, that still need to be fixed. World Tier 5 was not announced, but they did make it clear that it would be announced ahead of time and not just dropped on us as a surprise. Uh, They did acknowledge some character customization issues, and weapon skins being lost when you dismantle the weapon and how they're going to try to rectify that whole thing. Uh, they talked about how really the, the biggest part of what's going on between now and World Tier 5 being released is focusing on the health of the game. It seems like they want to make sure any you know loot caves or exploits or anything are taken care of before we get this World Tier 5 gear because at least in from in my opinion... On Diesel's opinion, it will be you know permanent gear that we get. So if people find a way to get it uh, and exploit it and stuff like that, it's kind of a, a thing you can't pull back. There was a stats with Yannick. We found out that there had been at that point uh, 5.5, I believe that's a billion headshots. There had been 123 billion bullets fired. Uh, 1.2, I believe that's trillion XP gained, uh, 3.9 billion NPCs killed, and uh, as Hamish was very disgusted, uh, 1.3 million birds had been killed. Uh, What people may not know, and this will probably get changed, is that uh, if you need NPC kills in the dark zone for commendations or for weeklies and stuff, uh, birds count. So... That number is probably going to shoot up (laughs) until they change that. Uh, They did mention as well that the official game plan, um, the official website has a game plan section on it uh, with helpful videos on topics and activities in the game. So it's probably mostly for newer players, but you may be surprised even if you're a vet, some of the things that maybe you don't fully understand. So this this, uh, state of the game, I think, was just kind of uh, the most state of the game of state of the games. I feel like they were just kind of giving us what's going on, what they're working on right now. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we got everything we needed out of it. Obviously, people want World Tier 5, but I've seen a lot of people, even people who are relatively critical of the game, kind of coming around and understanding why they didn't drop World Tier 5 yet. And they're kind of waiting for things to kind of, you know, for most of the stuff to to bubble up to the top before they give us what will probably be the end game gear. The biggest thing I've talked about as well is kind of pointing out how I, I think people need to realize that, you know, there's people who think division PVP is competitive and that's cool. You know, now there's even like leaderboards a little bit more and, you know, clan leader and stuff like that, which is great, but it's still not really competitive in my opinion, I guess. The thing is, is that this World Tier 5 uh, is going to come out, and I assume a couple weeks later, the raid is going to come out. And with the raid having this concept of this world's first, uh, as as I believe, this world's first is going to be the first actual competitive content we've ever gotten in the division. So, it seems to me that this whole idea is to try to put everyone on a level playing field, so it doesn't matter if you got... You know, three days early access or not, it's to give everyone, you know, the same playing field to to get gear for a couple weeks, and then do the raid. And in theory, it should give everyone 
uh, an equal shot to getting worlds first. Now, are the people who stream, you know, 16 hours a day and have a group of people who do the same thing are going to have perfect builds and perfect gear? Are they going to have an advantage? Well, of course they will. At the end of the day, they're putting in the hours. That's just the way it works. Um, but I really do think that it, it it's possible for, you know, people who aren't as deep to still, you know, have a chance and at the end of the day, we just want to finish the raid. Uh, I I assume my clan and my group of friends will will do a raid run and and try to do a worlds first. But I also uh, understand that you know it, it it may be not possible, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's probably going to be a PC group that does it first, um, simply because they'll just be able to clear waves faster because of headshots. But I I will be rooting for the for the console plebs like myself. But we'll see. Uh, but other than that, I feel like State of the Game was sort of mundane, but not in a bad way. Uh, we're kind of looking at a no news is good news situation. There's definitely still some bugs. There's definitely balancing. We'll talk about that. That needs to be done. But a lot of the stuff I'm seeing people complaining about is like UI stuff, is character customization stuff, is quality of life stuff, which is all important. Um, but it when that's the stuff that people are complaining about and worried about, uh, that that probably means that things are going pretty well in your game. Uh, it doesn't guarantee it, but I definitely think that uh, it, it means that we're in a, a pretty good spot. So, yeah. So there's that. Stay of the game. Recapped. Uh, with Division News, um, I kind of, you know, just wanted to talk about how, you know, it's uh, the Metacritic score of Division right now is, I think, 85. Uh, the, the, the consumer reviews, the, the you know, the, the user reviews, I think are around, what, 7.8 or uh, 7.8 or 8, something around there, uh, which is great. Uh, honestly, it's really good if you look at other games that have come out recently and even games that were heralded pretty highly. It's very competitive with all of them. And after the debacle that was the first game, I think that may surprise some people. So I, uh, I think that's great. What I'm going to say is that I'm a little hesitant to let my guard down um, because I know a lot of these people who make these videos, a lot of these people who write these reviews, um, I, I think that they have integrity. I think most of them do at least. But I also understand that the people in those fields and in those positions uh, kind of have to go with the flow and I, I have no doubt that uh, the moment there's an opportunity to turn around and and shit on the game that they will uh, if there's uh, there's very it's very possible there will be a legitimate reason for someone to do that and that's cool you know you gotta get the issues out there uh, but it's also very possible that if they just need some clicks or some attention, that could be the case as well. So as much as I love seeing these great reviews from people and, uh, you know, these journalists and stuff like that, I also, uh, you know, I always take a peek through their backlog of articles and I look for when they wrote that article about whatever game and how amazing it was. And then a week later, uh, you know, attacking the game and under somewhat suspicious circumstances. So just, you know, Definitely take in the love. It's super awesome that the game's getting so many great reviews. But also realize that that, uh, that, that is fleeting. Uh, I, I assume it's out by now. I haven't seen it. But, you know, Angry Joe put out that he's gonna, he's doing his, re he was recording his review. Uh, and then a few short minutes later, he, he sent another tweet saying that people are telling him to take it easy on the Division 2. Well, he didn't need to send that tweet. And what he's obviously preparing people for is that he's going to go against the grain and, and probably talk a bunch of crap about it. Now, the problem is, is I saw his commentary on the on the beta and um, I. I think Joe has uh, quite the flair for the dramatic, whether he's falling out of his chair or yelling very loudly about things or just in general. Uh, so. I, I kind of see him more as entertainment than like a, a really, you know, good source of information. Uh, but, you know, maybe I'll be wrong and I'll watch his review and I'll say, you know what? He has some really good points there. We'll see. The other thing I try to remember and keep in mind is that, you know, the, the community we have, the, the, a lot of the people who are probably around me are people who are really dedicated and deep into this game. 
uh, you know, a lot of these journalists, a lot of these video makers and stuff like that, they visit the division for a week or two and then they're gone. If there's DLCs, maybe they'll come back. But these people probably didn't play the division one really heavily. They probably didn't pick up every bit of intel and listen to every echo and read the book and read the comics and look at the art book and decipher every little bit bitty detail. And they don't have to. There's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly fine. If uh, you know they can't, they can't spend that kind of time, and maybe they just don't care about this game that much. That's fine. So for me, I know there's been a big, there's been a really tough thing for me to hear kind of complaints about the story and stuff because I think the division has a really great story. I do recognize that if you were someone who picked up this game uh, and just played through, you know, 30, 30, 35 hours, played all the story missions. And then you'd sit there and be like, well, that story is terrible, <laughs> you know, because it's fairly sparse. It's the same as the first game where if you only play through the story missions and that's all the story you get, then it's not the most impressive thing in the world. So I get why people who that's their job and that's all they can do because of time limitations. I think it's fair to, to, to go after the story a bit. I just also think that it, it's OK for people who have dug through every little bit of lore. I mean, I did a whole series on the first game going through every single set of phone recordings and, and talking about them and their implications in the story. So, you know, someone like me, I, I guess I see the world in a more detailed and larger way. Uh, so I don't agree that the story is terrible. And, and even people, there's even a few people who I know are very familiar with the game who are saying that. And I don't know, maybe it's just not their thing and that's fine. But, you know, I, I think it's just important to remember both sides that not everyone can dive 1000% into the lore. And, and, you know, at face value, the story, you know, it's no Red Dead, you know, it's no Metal Gear. It's, you know, some of those games that have these like deep, prolific, complicated stories. That's not what we got, but I still think what we have is pretty darn good. Uh, another little bit of news that I think is kind of interesting. Uh, I had posted this on Twitter, but a Reddit user found a poster in the game that showed this kind of artistic rendition of Lower Manhattan, which was the, you know, the south of what we played in division one and it, and it has text on it that says new york city after dark a return to the big apple january and like i don't want to overthink this but for an artist to sit there and make this you know it's mentioning the previous location that we played in it's showing a part of the map that we never explored uh, it's saying literally a return to the Big Apple, and it gives a, a month, January. Like, I know I'm, I have a flair for the dramatic. I know I enjoy my speculation, but this seems like such a clear and blatant call out to something we're going to see maybe in January. <laughs> now, it could also be nothing. Maybe it's just a little teaser meant to get people's brains moving a little bit. But something I've been considering is, I've, even before the game came out, I, I've kind of wondered if there's a chance we may get, uh, if, you, if you paid attention to Far Cry New Dawn, it has these like excursion type of things where you leave Montana or Colorado, wherever it's based, and you go to these other parts of the country on these like little expeditions to get resources and, and do stuff. Um, a part of me has kind of wondered if there may be uh, something like that in Division 2. Um, I still am very questionable whether or not this would be a year one thing. So this January thing, I mean, I assume that could be January 2020, which I believe is when the, the last DLC is supposed to be released for year one. And we don't know anything about that DLC because it's all blurred out when you read it. Or when you see the pictures and advertising of it. So maybe, I mean, that'd be really cool. Uh, maybe, you know, if we're getting a return of survival, maybe it's survival in lower Manhattan in the summer. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know, uh, from looking at that map and I kind of compared it to the division one and what we currently have in division two, it's not nearly as big. It's, you know, it's a relatively small area. Um, and, and maybe that's it or maybe it's nothing. I don't know, but I thought that was a really interesting thing. And, and it just, it's so in your face of like, Oh, Hey guys, you see this? Anyone going to see this? Someone going to post on Reddit? Someone going to post on Twitter? Yeah, you want to check it out? Why don't you take a peek at it? Like, it's just, I don't know. 
it's probably just wishful thinking on my part, but I am really curious to what that means. And uh, maybe it's not year one. Maybe it'd be for a year two or even the year three DLC. We will, uh, we'll have to see, but definitely interesting, worth checking out. Um, when it comes to the community topics and discussion part of the show, um, I kind of just wanted to kind of give my thoughts on 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 kind of the difference between fixing bugs and exploits in a game, specifically Division Two, and how that kind of has to be seen as different from balancing the game, and especially in PvP. Um, what what I'm kind of seeing, or at least it's the impression I'm getting. Is that people are, are kind of having this attitude of you know fix PvP, fix the balance, you know just fix it, hit but hit the button. Um, and, and sometimes I feel like people kind of look at you know balancing in a game in the exact same way they look at um, something like you know fixing the skill bug or something like that, where they don't realize that. You know, the, the, the balance in a game is, is kind of an ongoing process. And so they, you know, they fix the skill bug. They'll fix, you know, little bugs and, and cosmetic problems. And, and, you know, that's a thing that they can go in. They can figure out what's doing it. They can hit the buttons and then it's gone. It's fixed. Yay. Maybe there's other issues, but we'll leave that out, out of this example. The problem with PvP uh, balancing and just balancing even in PvE is that it's not just a you know fix this number solution. It's it's a feel. Uh, the biggest issue, in my opinion, is the fact that you've got you know multiple groups of of people in the player base with different goals and different desires. So there's people who really really like the current state of PvP. Uh, now, obviously, I think that there's some some big issues that everyone can somewhat agree on. Um, I, th I think being able to have a one-shot body shot uh, sniper build may be a bit much, though I do really think there should be the ability to one-shot headshot people if you've gone full into that type of build. Uh, but, you know, being able to body shot people, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how that works out. But there's people who really like the current PvD, and there's people who don't. And the problem is, is if you make changes in the game to make the group who doesn't like it happy you're going to alienate the original group who already liked it. And so the problem with, with PVP balancing and just balancing in general is that if, if you're looking to find the perfect balance, the perfect solution, you're, you're, you're probably kind of a fool. But if you're looking to try to strike a, a happy medium between everyone, I, I think that's kind of what probably has to happen. And I think that those groups of people have to kind of be willing to accept that. Um, I, it's just tough. Like I can see there's a lot of people really missing the old style of division one PVP. I've made my thoughts on that very clear. I have no idea why people would miss the way that was because it felt so gross. Uh, not even just like, I'm not even asking for call of duty kind of the way it is now, but just, I don't know. I think people are, I've said before, have some kind of Stockholm syndrome or they're just looking at it and like kind of rose tinted glasses, you know, uh, a nostalgia is a very powerful feeling. And, uh, you know, humans have this this interesting psychological thing where they they tend to remember the good parts of uh, past experiences and uh, they tend to forget the bad parts. And that's kind of a, a natural process of protecting our ego and protecting our ourselves. So I don't know. I'm not trying to psychoanalyze everyone who's who like the old division style PvP, but uh, kind of my final th thought um, is I just hope they can find a sweet spot. I really do think PvP, um, specifically, the time to kill could be a hair longer. Uh, as much as I enjoy the kind of the current style, um, I do appreciate the, the the things that people have said about how you know there you need in a, an RPG where you have these skills and all these stats and things like that. Um, it does kind of cheapen the whole experience if um, you 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 don't get a chance to try to utilize those skills and, and and skills and talents and and the build that you've made in in these pvp engagements so i mean i wouldn't mind but i'm talking like a five or ten percent you know change i'm not talking about giving people 50 percent more health where everyone's reloading four times and, and dancing around each other and, and doing all that silliness um kind of my kind of my basic feeling and my, my end feeling on it um, is that 
I, I think the game, and, and whether people agree with me or not, it's fine. I'm cool either way. But I think the game is currently closer to a really good PvP experience for the majority of players than it ever was in Division 1. It's not perfect now. It needs some significant changes now. But I, I still think it's way closer than it ever was in Division 1. And do with that what you will. I understand not everyone's go going to agree with me. I, I kind of hope you don't. Uh, my, my goal has always been to have a community that mostly probably disagrees with me, but is at least willing to hear me out. Uh, and I try to do the same thing the other way. Uh, I, I think the more different opinions you can take in, the stronger your opinion can be, whatever it may be. So it's just, you know, the balancing side of this game, hopefully the bugs, you know, they knock them out as they come and they, and, and that, and that is a situation that gets significantly better as time goes on. But the balancing, you know, how good or bad it is, is going to depend on your perspective. And I just think people need to realize and remember that it's, it's going to be a never ending process. The balancing will never be done. So, you know, I think we just need to be willing to accept that and just try to have a little fun and be nice to each other for the most part. Okay, moving on to listener questions. I have uh, three different people ask questions this week. If I missed yours, I apologize. Uh, I'll try to grab you next week. But the first one, I have Reaper Acadian. They said, should the agent be able to have a canine as a skill? Uh, that This falls into the category of things that uh, I think are cool, but I don't expect to ever happen. Um, yeah, you, you have to think about like the AI implications, the animation implications. They have to take the dog models that are in the game, uh, make them act kind of like seekers or something like that. But then all the animations, uh, everything, that, all the programming that goes into that. My guess is that if we were going to have something that complicated, uh, we would have it at launch because they would have worked on it over the last couple of years. Um, though, and kind of in the same vein, I wouldn't mind if we could pet the dogs, except I also kind of have a feeling that that's a, a pretty deep animation thing and interaction with the world thing. And I won't count on it, but I'll stay hopeful. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, Martin's Games asks... Uh, when is the best time to team up with other agents during the story or at end game? Okay, so if you are just getting into the division, if you're still leveling up, if you're early in the game and stuff like that, here's my advice with that. The way I played this game, the way I played Division Two, is um, you know, I'm very biased, but I think I did it in a pre, in a good way for me. So I basically soloed from level one to world tier four, with a few exceptions. I teamed up. There was one particular mission. I had a lot of trouble with the final boss and, and went in with a group and it was a little bit easier. Um, but for the most part, I soloed. And the key, in my opinion, is that in levels like 1 through 20-ish, this is advice I believe Marco gave, kind of. I suggest just doing control points and uh, and main missions. In that, and, and maybe and then some of the side activities. I suggest people not do the side missions until you're between level 20 and 25 um, because you'll, it'll help you in that final, you know, those last five or 10 levels to get up to 30. Because if you do all the side missions early, I think you end up getting to a point you're around like level 24, 25, and you have to do a decent amount of grinding to get to that 30 and start moving into the world tiers. Um, and I, and you can do all that stuff solo. You know, utilize the civilians in the game, you know, when you're doing control points, call in backup, uh, you know, do all that stuff. But the way I did it is I did mostly main missions and side activities and control points all the way to level 30. Uh, I did the three strongholds. I did those by myself uh, and they weren't that bad because I was fairly well geared. Got to world tier one, uh, world tier two, three, and then now I'm world tier four. Now I'm starting to play with other people more. I'm doing some conflict. I'm doing going into the DZ. Um, I'm, I'm I'm hunting the hunters. I'm uh, I've done all the side missions now, except a couple. I think there's I don't know where they are, but I believe there's some somewhere. Um, but but I I think that you really can experience the game and have a really good experience through the first you know big chunk of the game, the leveling up process on your own. I could let you move at your own pace. Uh, but that's just me. I'm also kind of a solo player anyway. So, Martin, that's my advice. And thank you for the question. 
Uh, the final questions here come from Nitro, and the first question is, any gameplay habits from Division 1 that you're having trouble in Division 2? Uh, the face tanking and being way too confident in my health <laughs> um, has been a big issue for me. Um, getting used to the way that the skills work now, not really in a good or bad way, it's just different, the, the seeker mind and stuff. Um, yeah, no, a lot of bad habits, but I feel like at this point I'm starting to break them. Um, getting used to the new, the new kind of style of movement and learning how to use it to my advantage, especially in PVP, like in conflict and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely some, uh, some bad habits I'm trying to get used to. Uh, and, and I'm almost at this point afraid to go back and play division one because, uh, I, I just, I think it would be a rough transition back. Uh, and the second question from Nitro is, any goals or plans for the echo cast as you look ahead for year two uh, and any highlights of year one. So um, for year two, I definitely would like to do some more guests. Um, you know, it's just easy for me to do this solo podcast, but um, back when I was starting, I was getting, you know, like 20, 30 listens a week. Uh, but the episodes where I did it, uh, I believe with like deep fried Dave armor for core, uh, Bronson, uh, those episodes had significantly more listens back then. They'd have 100 or 150. Um, well, now we have a lot more listens than that. And I highly suspect if I pull in some of those people, uh, that would be another, you know, people would really enjoy that. Uh, and I actually, uh, when I went out to San Francisco, did an interview with Yannick that my recorder uh, corrupted and didn't record. And he actually said that he uh, he vaguely said he would love to be on the podcast. Um, so uh, there's some hoops and ladders we have to dive through to do those things. And, you know, they're very busy right now. So uh, in the next couple months, I would like to get a hold of him uh, and other people on the dev team. Maybe Frederick Dylander, maybe Terry or Tony or Keith or, you know, I'll uh, I'll see if any, any of those guys seem interested. Uh, I also have words with Bond that I'm going to try to reinvigorate at some point. But things are a little busy right now for that. But yeah, uh, really just the growth as well. Um, I'll talk about more here in the next section, but um, just seeing this thing blow up and my wife and I are both so surprised that you all like to listen to me for 30-ish minutes a week, uh, but I really appreciate it. And it's it's been extremely heartwarming to, to see how this show has expanded and grown. Uh, and highlights of year one, yeah, I mean, the growth is great. Uh, being able, you know, to to report on my E3 experience, report on going out to San Francisco, um, just being able to kind of interact and get my thoughts out there, and then hopefully give people a different way of thinking about stuff, even if they completely disagree with me. Uh, that's that's something I really enjoy the thought of. I I, I think that there's uh, there's a lot of uh, everyone, you know, kind of sticking with people who you know says everything they want to say, whether it's negative or positive. And I've really tried to bring an environment in this podcast and just in everything I do of, hey, this is what I think. If it's different than what you think, at least consider what I'm saying. I'll try to do the same for you. This isn't a place where I'm expecting everyone to parrot my every idea. I think there's way too much of that. Way too many people. You just expect everyone to just agree with them. And that's just the way it is. And um, uh, and it just that that interaction and and that growth and and that kind of uh, the the excitement of the lead up to this release and now we get to enjoy it together and you get to listen to me babble about it so thanks and uh, Nitro thanks for the questions uh, content updates so uh, one year this is the fifty second episode in a row uh, haven't missed a week even. With vacations and lots of other things, I've managed to knock out uh, and not miss a single week, and uh, I'm, I'm really proud of that. Uh, we started on SoundCloud and YouTube, and between both, I was getting 20 to 30 listens a week, uh, and now, uh, via podcast platforms, I'm actually not even on SoundCloud anymore because they're their payment and that soundcloud is awful <laughs> i i like their website but the the amount of money they want you to pay uh to put your stuff on there is is just insane um but on the platforms we're getting right now i believe my last podcast went over 1500 listens the uh, episode 51 uh and on youtube uh they're getting 250 or more uh views a week so between the both you know we're we're, we're approaching you know, you know, 1,500, 2,000 listens uh, in the last few weeks. And 
Uh, and that's just been really, really heartwarming. And I really appreciate people, you know, being willing to listen and, and wanting to get kind of my input on things. Uh, so I just, I really thank everyone. If you're listening to this, whether you like me or you don't, whether you agree with me or you don't, uh, I, I just, I really appreciate you all coming along on this journey, uh, allowing me to, to take up a little bit of your time every week. And, uh, I don't plan on stopping. I'm going to be straight up. I would probably stop making videos and stop make and stop streaming and maybe even stop really being on Twitter. I think before I would stop doing this show, this is definitely the thing I've, um, I love streaming. I love the instant interaction with everyone and, 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 and the gameplay with people. Um, you know, the videos are fun and cool and that, and that channel has grown a lot and I'm really proud of that. Uh, we're almost partnered on there and, um, and Twitter obviously has its ups and downs, but overall is a lot of fun. But, but this has definitely become probably my favorite part of content creation. And, and that's because of everyone who listens. So thank you very much. Uh, other content update. We have the Scrub Club on Xbox, the clan that we're running. I think we're level 19 or 20 now. Uh, absolutely killing it. Somehow we're not on the leaderboard. I was looking at our numbers and we really should be. So I don't know if those leaderboards are bugged or if maybe we aren't doing as good as I thought. But honestly, I don't care. We have some really, really strong people in the clan. Uh, we're pulling people in every week. Um, at this point, I am saying if, if you apply for the Scrub Club on Xbox, uh, you need to be an end game. You need to be relatively active. There's, uh, I'd say about half the members are people who just applied who I don't really know. I'm kind of keeping an eye on that. You know, if, if I know who you are, if we communicate, and I know you're busy or whatever, it's all good. Um, but, you know, I think we have around five openings right now. So, you know, shoot me a message. Let me know what's going on. Uh, you know, if everything is on the up and up, I can bring you in. Uh, but you know, just kind of keep in mind that if you know, people stop playing completely, I'm probably going to try to make room for new people, but, uh, it's awesome. Um, and I'm really looking for people who want a PVP. Uh, that definitely isn't the most popular part of our group, uh, but it's something I want to get more into now that I'm at world tier four and have gear. I can actually do some stuff with. I have a nasty vector build that is just brutal to people. And, um, yeah. So if you're curious, let me know. And the very last thing, the thing that you were all waiting for is the giveaway. I am super pumped about this. I have a giveaway that has already started and it goes until like the middle of April. I'm giving away all three of the extremist malice comic books. I'm giving away the broken Dawn novel by Alex Irvine. I'm giving away the world of the, uh, of the division art book that hasn't even come out yet, at least in the States. And I'm giving away an official uh, The Division 2 steel mug. It's a black mug with the Division 2 branding on the outside. And then it's, uh, you know, it's the, the brush metal on the inside. It's, it's really, really cool. Uh, I'm not even taking mine out of my box, but I got an extra. And the winner gets all of those items. Uh, I believe it's around 100 bucks worth of stuff. Uh, and for anyone who's a big Division fan, uh, you know this stuff is so cool to get. And if you can get it for free, it's even better. Uh, it just, I have five different options for entries. They're one entry per uh, method. It's just to follow most of my social media platforms and to join my discord. And, uh, just keep in mind that if you win whatever method you use, so if you follow me on Twitter and that's how you win, you still need to be following me on Twitter. You can't just follow, get your entry and then bounce. I will, you, I will pick someone else just as a little disclaimer. And that's what I have this week. If you like the podcast, please follow on whatever platform you're using. If you're on iTunes, please rate the podcast and leave a review. It helps people find me. If you check the podcast out on YouTube and you want to see more, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment down below with questions, your own thoughts, or you know whatever you feel like. Uh, I am on uh, Twitch, where I stream multiple times a week, and on Twitter, both as Bond Diesel, where you can find a bunch of my other content links. And, uh, and that's what I have. So, until next time.